The call stack is a dynamic data structure maintained inside the computer's RAM by the operating system. Its purpose is to control the way procedures and functions call each other and to control the way they pass parameters to each other. A call stack is maintained for each task and indeed for each thread. It's sometimes referred to as the machine stack or the execution stack. More often than not, it's simply known as the stack. Consider a scenario where procedure 1 calls procedure 2, which in turn calls procedure 3, which in turn calls procedure 4. Let's suppose also that procedure 2 has two input parameters, and so does procedure 3, and so does procedure 4. Also, procedure 2 declares two local variables, as does procedure 3 and procedure 4. So what happens when procedure 1 calls procedure 2? First of all, any parameters which procedure 2 is expecting are pushed onto the stack. They're pushed onto the stack in the reverse order to which they were declared in procedure 2's parameter list. Next, the return address of procedure 1 is pushed onto the stack. This comes from the CPU's program counter and it will be used later to return control back to procedure 1 when procedure 2 is finished. It's sometimes called the instruction pointer. Now that procedure 2 is in control, any local variables declared inside procedure 2 can be pushed onto the stack as well. So at this stage, procedure 2 is up and running and it has what's called a stack frame. Procedure 2 can traverse this stack frame to get a hold of any data it needs. Suppose now that procedure 2 calls procedure 3. As before, any parameters which procedure 3 is expecting are pushed onto the stack. Next, the return address of procedure 2 is pushed onto the stack. This comes from the CPU's program counter. Finally, any local variables declared inside procedure 3 are also pushed onto the stack. So procedure 3 is now in control and its stack frame is in place so it can get a hold of any data it needs. When procedure 3 calls procedure 4, we see the same steps again. Any parameters which procedure 4 is expecting are pushed onto the stack one by one. The return address of procedure 3 is then pushed onto the stack, followed by any local variables which have been declared inside Procedure 4. Procedure 4 is now in control. When Procedure 4 has finished, the stack will be torn down. So, Procedure 4 is now returning control to Procedure 3. First of all, any of Procedure 4's local variables are popped off the stack. Procedure 4 can then pop off the return address to repopulate the program counter and return control back to Procedure 3. In this particular scheme, Procedure 3 is responsible for cleaning up the rest of Procedure 4's stack frame. So Procedure 3 is now back in control and it can pick up from where it left off. When Procedure 3 returns control to Procedure 2, we see the same again. Any local variables are popped off the stack. This allows Procedure 3 to pop the return address off the stack. And Procedure 2 is back in control. Procedure 2 cleans up the stack and continues from where it left off. As before, when Procedure 2 is ready to return control to Procedure 1, Local variables are popped off the stack. Procedure 1's return address is obtained. The program counter is repopulated. And Procedure 1 is back in control. It cleans up the stack and picks up from where it left off. So here we are, back where we started. In the scheme we've just described, We've seen that Procedure 2's parameters are pushed onto the stack 
before the return address of procedure 1 is pushed onto the stack. And hence it's the responsibility of the calling procedure to clean up the stack once it's regained control. In some literature you will see that the return address is pushed onto the stack first, before the parameters. The way this actually works depends very much on the machine architecture and of course the machine language. It's also worth saying a little bit about how functions return their values. Again, depending on the architecture, function return values may be passed back to the calling procedure via the stack. Alternatively, they may be passed back via a CPU register, specifically the accumulator. So if you read around this subject, the waters may be a little bit muddied but it's worth appreciating that exactly how it happens very much depends on the design of the central processing unit and of course the machine language. What's important here is to realize that parameters are passed via the stack and that return address is crucial to return control back to the calling procedure.